this is really bad. Like, really, really bad. Do you wanna see? All right. It's a wreck. It's terrible. We've tried everything. We've moved stuff around. We've rearranged. We've gotten bins, but everything is still just spilling over. It's just hanging over the edge. My mom would be horrified. We've got to do something. We have to do something. I'm kicking off a new series about our master closet renovation. There will be multiple videos showing you different aspects of the closet renovation. I'm gonna break them up into different parts because it was a ton of work. And that way you can consistently get some videos out of it. We have been renovating our master bedroom and bathroom and we were going to kind of try to just upgrade some lighting and the flooring in here, but I don't think that'll work. We really need to overhaul this place. Let me show you some of the plan that we think we've come up with. Some of this might kind of change as we get into the build and figure it out, but we're really trying to shoot for being under $1,000 for all of this. Let me show you. Stepping in here, it just... It's a very big closet, but it's just not very useful. So we want to change that. We're going to have a bunch of floating shelves here that will house shoes, probably up to about five feet. So this entire wire shelf is gone. This one's gone. We're going to patch those holes so that we can paint and make it look good. By the way, we hate wire shelving. I don't know if you feel the same, but Rebecca and I can't stand it. Uh, we don't like how stuff falls in between it. And I just hate the way it looks. So then moving on, we need to leave a little bit of room in front of the floating shelves. They'll probably be about 14 inches deep. Uh, we want a little bit of walking room so you can go get shoes. And then starting here, going to about here, about four feet will be a countertop height. And below that will be a double bank of drawers, something like that. Another possibility we've thought about is uh, just buying a dresser that would kind of fit that spot and look like an accent piece. You can buy some of those nowadays. They're not gonna be like generational pieces, but you can buy some of those that, frankly, they're a lot cheaper than what you could actually build it for, even building it yourself. Then at that point, it will come over and it will go up eight feet and all the way to the end wall. And what we will have in this space back here will be a double hanging section. So you'll have a hanging bar up top, a hanging bar down below. So that will have a good almost 70 inches of hanging space. I think that will work really well. Then moving to this side, we don't like how as soon as you walk in the door, this kind of hits you in the face, tall right in your face. We want to build another countertop height. Uh, it would be a little bit lower than this. It's a standard countertop height, uh, probably a wood top. And there will be a spot for a vertical hamper that you can store a clothes hamper in there. Then there will be another bank of drawers right here. I'm planning on doing probably a couple of shallow ones for jewelry, watches, that kind of thing, if you didn't happen to want those to sit out on a display, but you would have some countertop to display them if you would like to. Then uh, we would start about here and go all the way up to eight feet and go over, by the way, this is eight feet, so it's gonna match up with that pretty well. Uh, and we will have another section here that will be double hanging clothes. And then starting here, we'll go all the way down to the ground and have a good three feet of a tall hanging section. We're gonna eliminate the bottom section so that for any of our tall things, some of her dresses, maybe my suits or that kind of thing, we would have plenty of that. We don't have a ton of the tall stuff, but that should work really well. So above all of them, kind of like we have here, the hanging cabinets standard is about 84 inches, seven feet. So we would go up to seven feet there and we would have another extra foot on top that we will probably be able to have cubbies or bins or something to hold other things. That's the plan right now. We'll see how much it changes. I'm probably gonna put a bench, I'm build a bench to go underneath the window here. And we're still kind of talking about paint colors and choices and everything, but we're getting excited about changing this. By the time we got all that crap out of the closet, it was just about time to call it a day. We were tired. So we headed to the store to grab some paint samples and that way we could go ahead and be deciding on what we wanted. So these are our colors, right? That are already in our bathroom that we yeah. redid. So these are the counter, or not the counters, the cabinets, and these are the walls. Okay. 
we'll see how well this is translating on the camera, but now we have daylight to see it. Last night we were just seeing it with artificial light, and so you get a very different picture of paint swatches. Yeah. So what are some of the ones that we picked up that we're looking at? Um, we looked at Dovetail. Okay. One a little bit darker than the gray on the walls in the bit in the bathroom. But now that we're seeing that, that yeah, one's probably seems, more brownish than we're wanting? Yeah, or a little too dark. Okay. We don't want to go full bold. Right, but our eyes kept going back to rare gray, where it's a little darker, but not so... Yeah. So dark. And it seems like it goes with these. Mm -hmm. I think so they're very complimentary. These aren't in this room, but they're just outside there in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And that could look nice if we do all of this stuff in, in the closet with this, because we're going to have some really light colored wood countertops. Yeah. And the floor will be a darker wood, but I think all of that will go. Yeah, I think... We've got our decision. It is demo day. It's demo day here, <laughs> and we are ready to tear down all of this stuff. I don't even know. I'm probably blocking my microphone here. Oh, take this mask off. Today, we're going to get all of these ugly wire shelves taken down. We're going to take up the baseboard and rip up the carpet and padding and do what we need to to prep the floor. And I'm ready. You ready? Yep. All right, let's do it. It's amazing just how little holds these wire shelves up. There are a few places that they're put into anchors and a few supports, but I wouldn't be surprised if multiple people had these fall. I've heard of that happening to some other people in their closets, and I've actually had one fall in my shop. person who made these is a jerk. <laughs> I don't disagree. It's a jerk. Pop. Whoa. All right, let me help you with that. Yes. Empowered woman. Hmm. See these muscles? We found out there's definitely an order of operations to these wire shelves as far as removing them. You have, they have some top clips that are holding them in. You have to remove those first. On the first one, we did it the wrong way and pulled these off and then the whole shelf wanted to fall. Then you have to kind of undo it to where you can pop it up and lift that shelf out and then you take these off. But the reason these are annoying is the screws just don't feel like they're into much. These are pretty flimsy anchors. And then the anchors leave these giant holes in your wall everywhere um, that you have to patch. So that's fun. Yeah, holes are fun. You make it look easy though. And you try not to mark up the wall more because that's just more stuff you have to patch. All right. It looked like you were having success with a hammer just pulling. Yep. Just felt good. Get it. Oh, one shot. Get it, boy. Hey. Hey. All right, last one. Make it count. Bummer. Disappointed in you. I know. Here's a little tip. If you're, this one might be in a stud. Hang on, before I show you. Yep. We'll move to the next one. That one was in a stud. If they're not in a stud and they're in these anchors, the screws only have threads on part of the, the shaft of it. So when you start to back it out, it basically just spins. Sometimes you get it to come out like that, but if it's kind of stuck, take a, a pry bar or a scraper or something and pull back pressure on the screw and gently go and you'll be able to back it all the way out. No problem. Those are some crummy anchors. We have ripped down all of the wire shelving and it has left tons of holes. We're gonna to have to go back and kind of clean these up to where they can be patched better. But now we're going to rip up all of the base molding. 
A lot of it won't be reused because we're building cabinets in on large sections. So the base molding will just end in the cabinet and we'll have a different kind of toe kick for that. Uh, because of that, I've gone around and marked oversized where we think we will need to keep the base. That way we don't have to buy new. And I'm just going to cut it with this multi-tool right here before we remove it from the wall because I think it'll make it easier. Plus we won't have this big long 14 inch, uh, 14 foot piece to store in the house somewhere until we're ready to use it. So I'm gonna go around and just make these cuts. Uh, then I'm gonna take a sharp utility knife and score right along the caulk line here where it meets the wall. And you wanna do that quite well so that it does not tear paint and tape uh, paper on the drywall and all that. Uh, ask me how I know. We learned on some other rooms the hard way, didn't we? We started just pulling stuff off and it didn't go well. And so why do you think not having to buy more trim would be helpful? Like why are we not wanting to buy new? Um, partially, like this is a standard trim, so you would be able to find it, but we're just trying to do this closet on a budget. So we really don't want to have to add any other expenses in there. We did this on some other rooms where we removed the base molding and it worked well and we were able to clean it up and kind of just touch up the, the holes when we put it back and it looks fantastic. So I think that will really help us save some money not having to buy a few pieces of molding here and there. Picked up this trim puller tool for the last couple rooms that we did. Uh, this thing has worked pretty well. So it pivots on a hinge and it does a better job of not damaging your wall when you're removing base molding and trim and that kind of thing because you hammer it in, this whole plate ends up holding uh, steady while you pry this off rather than if you use a hammer and do that or a crowbar, it will dig into your drywall and you'll have a mess. So I'm just going to go around. I found it works well to kind of angle this. And then you just pop it out like that. I didn't quite cut it. There we go. And then you can just keep going. I think we did it in the reverse order. We were supposed to take the carpet up first. We couldn't remember from oh, last yeah. time. Whoops. Cause it's holding us off. Ugh. It's buried in the carpet. So, whoops. That's all right. Here's a little hint also, if you're keeping your trim, pick a way that makes sense for you of how you're gonna work around the room and then reinstall it. And we would just go and number the boards on the back. So this one, we usually start at the left side of the room and work our way around. So this one will be number one. The next piece that we're gonna keep, obviously number two, three, and then you just have to reinstall it in the opposite direction. Makes it real easy. We were able to puzzle piece it back together very easily on the last couple rooms. So we're gonna do that here. <laughs> At this point, we stopped and decided to rip up the carpet first. It was preventing us from getting this baseboard up since the carpet was kind of buried underneath that front edge. might be tempted to try to cut this carpet out and take it all out at once. I want to urge you not to do that. Make smaller cuts and just roll it up in pieces like this. It's much easier to get out of the room, get it downstairs and dispose of it. If you've never taken up these tack strips that hold carpet down, be really careful. They have a lot of really sharp tack spikes and they have the tendency to want to just 
blow themselves apart. So you have to be a little careful with them. But if you can do it right, you can kind of work your way down like this and get it to come up either all in one piece or mostly in one piece because they're only held down occasionally by these larger nails. So if you work your way down as you go, and I found it helpful to usually have like a flat screwdriver or something else that you can kind of pry and work your way down like this. There we go. There we go. Just like that. And then they're easy to take care of because you can put them in a pile and go get rid of them. I like to take a flat scraper and remove some of the excess caulking that was left on the wall. Be sure to do this in a downward manner so that if the paint is going to tear, it's going to kind of tear downward and not rip up into the wall that will be exposed later. But just remove any of this debris and get rid of it. It'll make putting the baseboards back on later a lot easier. Something that will definitely prevent you from getting a smooth finish when you're patching some of these holes is the drywall paper sticking out of all these holes. You need to trim that back as nicely as you can. And then here we're actually coming back with the end of a Sharpie and kind of pushing it in, rounding it in. That way the drywall mud can patch over something smooth. We've done all of the prep. The floor is prepped. The next stage is to mud the drywall. This is the type of mud that you mix yourself and not all drywall compounds are made equal. So just know this stuff is better because I bought some, I was like, oh, I don't want to mix it, whatever. I bought the ready mix stuff, but I didn't read it closely enough and it has like a 12 hour or 20 hour dry time until you can recoat, something like that. Anyway, they make different speeds of drying time. I got kind of a happy medium. This one's a 40 minute mud or 45 minute. But if you mix it with warm water, it will dry faster and that gives you a little, little more play. You can get multiple coats done in one day. Anyway, I'm gonna slap this on here on all these holes. It's gonna take a while. And while that's drying, we'll probably start working on the platform. Got my little helper with me. We picked out a paint, didn't we? Mm -hmm. What do we go with? Uh, rare gray. Rare gray. All right, got a couple paint stir sticks. We're ready to go. Let's do it. One of the YouTube channels that I really like, Perkins Builder Brothers, they always close their videos with saying, thanks for building with us. So I'm gonna borrow it and say, thanks for building with me. I'll see you on the next one.